This video is about page 13 to 16 of your book. Like previous videos, I'm going to explain the difficult vocabulary first, and then I'll talk about the plot and characters. So let's start. Let's take a look at page 13 of your book. Let me first explain the vocabulary before I talk about the plot. And in this part, the inspector has just arrived, and he started questioning Mr. Burling. So let's take a look at these words. The first one, employees, employees. It means the workers, the staff of a company. And then number two, discharged, discharged. Mr. Burling said Eva was his employee a year ago, and he discharged her. It means he fired her, asking her to leave the company. And then the next phrase, committed suicide, committed suicide. It means killing oneself. So when we when we use suicide as a noun, we'll normally use committed before it. So the whole phrase would be committed suicide. And then the next one, 1910, remember, is the year when Eva was fired from the Berlin and Company, 1910, 1910. And then number four, out of this, out of this. When inspector started asking Mr. Berlin questions, Gerald asked whether he should be out of this. It means whether he should be involved or not. So getting out of this means not getting involved. Let's continue on page 13. The first word, incidentally, incidentally. It means additionally, more information like, by the way, incidentally. And the next one, second one, modestly, modestly. It means humble, humbly. Here it also means simple, quiet. So Mr. Burning was saying that they were having a very quiet, simple, small family dinner only. And the third word, gravely, gravely. We may know that grave means a place when people died, you will be buried at the grave. But here is gravely, it means seriously, seriously. And then number four, number four, mysterious, mysterious. It means secretly. And then number five, scandalous, scandalous. So it's describing whether the incident is a scandal that would cause trouble to the family and cause public outrage. So making people angry if it's a news about the family. Scandalous. And then number six, straightforward, straightforward. So it's not complicated at all. It's very obvious that it's straightforward. And number seven, the last one, wretched, wretched. It means unhappy, unfortunate. So the wretched girl, meaning the girl was very unhappy and it, she was a very unfortunate, unlucky girl. Okay, so let's take a look at page 14, 14, page 14. Here are some words that I want you to know. Number one, determined, determined. So originally, determined means a very firm decision. Determined can also mean strong will, that you're willing to do something very determined. But here, this word determine here means causing another action. So what happened to her may have determined what happened. So determine here means what happened to her may decide, may affect what happened to her afterwards. So this is what determine here means. And number two, driven. Driven here means forced. So, um... The inspector said what happened to Eva Smith may have driven her, may force her to commit suicide. Number three, outward. Outward. Outward means weird, embarrassing situations, very embarrassed. So very strange and embarrassed situation, very outward. And the last phrase I want you to pay attention to would be by Jove, by Jove. Basically, it's an ex exclamation like, oh God, it's very surprising. It has no meaning but to just express your tone and that you're surprised. Continue on page 14. There are more words in the second part of page 14 that I want you to learn. So Mr. Burnley started explaining who Eva was and describing her. So these are the words to describe Eva Smith. Number one, lively, lively. It means she was full of energy. She's a very lively person. She, she was a very energetic person. She was also good looking, meaning that she was pretty. And she was country bred, meaning that she was brought up in the countryside, not from a city. 
Mr. Burling even said that he fancied her, but someone he actually liked. All right, number four, foreman. Foreman. Foreman basically is the supervisor in a factory. Normally, it's a male, so a guy need to control and supervise and lead all the workers in the factory. Then that is the foreman. And the next word, leading operator. Leading operator. Originally, Mr. Burling tried to、uh, promote Eva Smith to a leading operator role. So an operator is a person who can operate a machine in a factory. So leading operator is the leading staff. She might still be a worker, but she could lead several people in a team, a little bit like a mini manager in a team. So a leading operator. Still a worker, who needed to operate the machine, but can also lead a, li- a little team in the factory. Okay, number six, restless, restless, restless means unwilling to stay quiet. So they had some thought, they would express, without fearing that they would get into trouble. Restless, they didn't want to keep quiet anymore.、And、number seven, shillings, shillings. Shillings basically at that time is a dollar unit, is a unit for currency for money, and the last word refuse simply means not willing to do. So when Eva tried to ask for more salary and Mr. Berling refused, didn't want to give her more salary. Okay, and then this is fifteen, page fifteen.、Um, take a look at the line where Mr. Berling said,、uh, "I don't like that tone. Tone means attitude." He didn't like the tone, the attitude of the inspector. And number two, Mr. Berling talked about labor cost. Labor cost. So that's the money that the company needed to spend for labor. So salary of the worker. So that is the labor cost. And number three, demand. So this demand means a request. People request and ask for something. A demand. Number four, satisfy. So if you're satisfied with something, you're happy with the result. So you're happy. You're satisfied. Number five, strike, strike. A strike means、uh, workers they refuse to go to work. Normally, they will ask for something so that they refuse to go to work. So that is a strike. Continue with page fifteen. Number one, broke. Broke here means running out of money, bankrupt, no more money, broke. And number two, Berlin. Mr. Berlin described this strike as a pitiful affair. So like this strike. Was unsuccessful, and he felt sorry for the worker. They were like poor because the strike wasn't successful. And then number three, ring leaders. Ring leaders meaning the key leaders of the strike. Ring leaders, the one who started it and initiated the strike. Ring leaders. Number four, come down, come down. So come down here means、um, making decision. So Mr. Berling said when the workers didn't go to work, he needed to come down sharply. So he needed to make a decision immediately, so that he wouldn't lose so much money. And last phrase, asking for the earth. It means that、um, if Mr. Berling didn't stop those workers going on a strike, these workers would ask for more and more and more that he could not fulfill at the end. So asking for the earth means asking for something that is impossible to give. Like you may ask me, and say, "Oh, you wouldn't want to submit this assignment for one day." And then if I said yes, you may ask for more and more, and then saying that, "Oh, the whole year's assignment I didn't want to submit." Then this is asking for the earth because I couldn't say yes to you if you told me that you're not going to submit assignment for the whole year. So this is asking for the earth, something that is impossible to say yes to. And then the page sixteen of this book, just two words here: chief constable, chief constable. So Mr. Berlin told the inspector that he knew the chief constable, meaning that the chief police officer, the boss in the police station. And then the next one, damn shame, is a root word. Don't use it, please. But when Eric said it. He meant that it was very embarrassing and something that he wasn't proud of, so he was complaining, Mister Berling, saying that he was very embarrassed of what Mister Berling had done. Okay, and the last part for vocabulary on page seventeen. 
And number one, wages. Wages means salary, money that the company pay to the staff, the workers in the factory. Number two, sacked. Sacked. It simply means fired. Fired. Discharged. And number three, she had a bit more spirit. She had a bit more spirit. Means Eva didn't give up easily. She had a very strong will. So that is what she had a bit more spirit means. And then number four, brighten your ideas. Simply means having more clever ideas. So Mr. Burling was saying that Eric has some stupid idea, and he should brighten his ideas. He should be cleverer. And then the next phrase, public school and varsity life. If people went to public school by that time, people were really highly educated. And varsity life simply means university life. So basically, Mr. Brennan was asking Eric what he had learned in schools. And then number six, sulkily, sulkily. It means unhappy, unhappily. When Mr. Brennan asked Eva to clear out, number seven, clear out, meaning asking her to leave the company, leaving the place, clear out. So here are all the difficult words from page thirteen to sixteen. Now I'm going to talk about the plot. So now let's go back to page thirteen of your book, and then we start looking at the story. Remember, in the previous page, the inspector showed Mr. Burnley the photograph of Eva Smith, and by that time, Mr. Burnley said he didn't remember Eva Smith at all. But the inspector insisted and continued to question him, and at the end, Mr. Burnley admitted that he remembered Eva Smith. Mr. Burnley didn't want to admit that he knew Eva Smith because he didn't want to get into trouble.、Um, he didn't want to get involved in any scandals because he was waiting for his knighthood to be received. But since the inspector insisted, so he, Mr. Burnley had to admit that he knew Eva Smith and remembered her. And Eva Smith was one of his employees, and he had fired her a year ago. And when Eric learned that his father fired Eva Smith, Eric immediately asked, "Was that the reason why Eva Smith killed herself?" Even Eric questioned his father. You can see that Eric never supported his father. And of course, Mr. Burling asked Eric to keep quiet and not to get excited. One of the reasons why Eric was a little bit excited probably because he drank too much already. He was a little bit drunk. That's why before. And on page twelve, I remember, Mr. Brennan asked Eric not to drink any more when the inspector started to question them to stop him from getting more drunk. And then Mr. Brennan started to explain when he fired Eva Smith, and that was、um, a year ago. No, almost two years ago. That was nineteen ten September, early autumn, end of September. So remember the dinner, the engagement dinner, where the story was set, was April nineteen twelve, and two years ago, September nineteen ten, Eva left the company because Mr. Burling fired her. And so when Mr. Burling started to explain、um, who Eva was, and Gerald asked whether Mr. Burling wanted Gerald not to get involved, and to leave the house. And because to Mr. Burling it wasn't such a big deal for firing a a, a staff and a worker, so he didn't see that that would be any big problem. So he said it's fine for Gerald to stay at at the house. And you can see Mr. Burling even tried to introduce Gerald as the son of Sir George Croft from the very famous Croft Limited. Why did Mr. Burling introduce Gerald like that? Why didn't he just introduce Gerald as, "Oh, this is the fiance of my daughter," but instead he introduced Gerald as the son of Sir George Croft. We've learned that Sir George Croft, the family, the Croft family was from an upper class family, and definitely was well known in the town. So by introducing Gerald like this, Mr. Burton was kind of threatening the inspector. Asking the inspector not to mess with these big people in the town, or he would have trouble at work. That's the purpose why Mr. Burling tried to introduce Gerald as the son of Sir George Croft. 
but from the inspector's reaction, he seemed not to know Gerald, until Mr. Burling explained that Gerald was engaged to Sheila, and that was when inspector realized who he was. And suddenly, the inspector was very serious, saying that then he preferred Gerald to stay as well, because he was going to question him. And Drew was surprised. And Mr. Burning was getting impatient because he thought that it was a scandal. And he didn't want any scandal that would affect his knighthood. To him, firing a worker was something very simple, not complicated at all. And it happened almost two years ago. So he thought that whatever he did, he should not be the one to be responsible for this girl's death. This is what Mr. Byrne thought. But the inspector didn't agree. He thought that it was a chain of events. And Mr. Byrne was the one who started it because he fired Eva. And that's why Eva left the company and experienced all the events afterwards that caused her to commit suicide. And that's why the inspector thought that Mr. Byrne was responsible. But to Mr. Burling, he thought that it was nonsense because he thought that if everyone was responsible for what others did, that would be very awkward. And Mr. Burning thought that it was impossible. And that reminded Eric what Mr. Burning said before the inspector arrived, saying that everyone needed to look after them themselves and look after their own family without caring about the rest of the people in the society. All you needed to do was to focus in your own family, your own business. And Mr. Burning didn't want Eric to speak any further, so asked him to stop talking because he didn't want the inspector to know too much about their own family businesses. And of course, the inspector heard it and questioned him what he was talking about, and Mr. Burning explained that it was the advice that he gave to Eric and Gerald. And by switching the inspector's focus, so Mr. Burling immediately mentioned that he remembered uh, Eva Smith at that moment because he didn't want the inspector to drill in the conversation that he had with Eric and Gerald. So here's a little description of Eva Smith. Also a little background um, about her before she was fired from the Burling and Company. So from this little description, We've learned that Eva Smith was a lively person, that she was energetic, she was pretty, she was good looking, and she was actually from the countryside. She was country bred, brought up in the countryside, and uh, only came to the town uh, to work at a factory. Probably wanted to change the living standard, wanted to earn some more money. And he worked in a machine shop over a year, so it was like a factory for a garment. And at that time, the supervisor of the machine shop, the factory, the, the foreman, planned to promote Eva because he worked quite well. Her performance was good. And planning to promote her as the leading operator. So there were many female workers working, operating the machines. And the foreman wanted to make Eva the leading operator. So the one leading other workers to work in the machine shop. However, in 1910, August, right after the holiday in summer, a group of workers led by Eva Smith wanted to ask for a more salary. They wanted to ask uh, to have 25 shillings instead of 22.6 shillings. But to Mr. Burling, he thought that 22.6 shillings was what generally paid in the industry. So it solved like the average salary already. And that's why Mr. Burnham refused to raise their salary. However, if you looked at how much 22.5 shillings or 25 shillings per week compared to Hong Kong now, you will know why this worker asked for more salary. Imagine 25 shillings only approximately a thousand dollar Hong Kong dollar right now. So a, a person only earn $4,000 per month in Hong Kong right now. Think about how much pocket money your parents give you weekly. Imagine your family, your parents, give you $1,000 a week and you need to get your own flat and you need to get your own clothes, you need to get your own food. 
you need to pay for your own transport to go to school. Do you think you will have enough? Will you ask for more if your parents only give you a thousand dollar a week and ask you to live on your own? And that's why. The workers, of course, tried to ask for more salary because they didn't have enough for their living. But imagine if Mr. Berling had to raise the salary of each of his staff. And remember, he said he has several hundred of these staff working for him. How much he needed to pay extra? So of course, Mr. Berling would refuse, right? And both sides, they have their own arguments. They have their own. Wish and need and demand, so that was the conflict between Mr. Burling and all the workers, especially Eva Smith. So take a look at this timeline one more time, and from this page we've learned that Eva Smith actually started working in 1909 September. After a year, she started a strike in August, asking for more money, and one month later, by the end of September, Mr. Burling fired her. And this story, the inspector was at the house,、um, at in April nineteen twelve. That was when the whole Berlin family was celebrating the engagement, having the dinner. So this is the timeline of the first events. But when Mr. Berlin tried to explain why he refused raising the salary, the inspector didn't understand. He asked why. He asked why Mr. Berlin refused, and Mr. Berlin was shocked. He didn't understand why the inspector didn't understand. It was something very simple. Who would want to pay more money to hire staff if you want to earn more money, right? Of course, you need to keep the labor cost down if you want to earn more profit. And the inspector didn't understand. It's not that the inspector didn't understand that Mr. Berling wanted to earn more money, but he didn't understand how Mr. Berling was so cruel to the low class working women. When people were suffering and didn't have enough money to support their own living, and rich people like Mr. Berlin didn't offer any help, this was what the inspector didn't understand. And so Mr. Berlin continued to explain, saying that it was his own business. How he ran his own business is his own business. Other people's comment shouldn't bother him. How he ran his own business, but the inspector thought that it was. The inspector's business to care and learn and understand why Mr. Berling would do that, and he was with such pretty impolite tone, and Mr. Berling was not happy about it, and he didn't like it. Remember, Mr. Berling always thought that the inspector was just a working class man, and he was in the upper middle class. Someone talked to him impolitely like that, he wouldn't be happy. But to the inspector. He thought that he had the authority because he was a police inspector, and remember his age. He was almost fifty too. So in terms of life experience, he had similar life experience as Mr. Berling did. So this is why the inspector was there to talk to Mr. Berling like that. So the inspector continued to ask why Mr. Berling would make such decision by refusing、mm, to raise the salary of the workers, and Mr. Berling continued to explain. He said it was his duty. To keep the labor costs down, because he was the boss of a company. If he agreed to raise the salary of everyone, that would be a twelve percent increase of the labor cost. And to the boss, he thought that it wasn't a wise decision. And he tried to justify his action by saying that it was how much everyone was paying the workers by that time. And he explained that it was a free country. If you didn't like working at my factory, you could find another job and work at. Find another factory to work at. This is the concept of capitalism. It's free economy. No one would force the workers to stay at the factory to work. If you don't like, you can go to another one. But Eric pointed out a very important point. Was that actually these workers? They didn't have a lot of choices. It's not like they were well educated, and they were women. They were looked down by men. They wouldn't be given. Equal opportunity as other men would have received. So even it was a free country because of these gender inequality and of course of the social class issues and also about education, Eva wouldn't have a lot of choices, and that's why she had to stay in this factory and work for Mr. Berling, and that's why she 
decided to ask for higher wages. But to Mr. Burling, he thought Eric's speech was silly. Because he was young, he was inexperienced. When all these people started a strike, Eric didn't start working at Burling and Company yet. It implies that he was very young and inexperienced. And so Mr. Burling mentioned about the strike that Eva and other few workers initiated and started. And Gerald gave his comment here, saying that the workers wouldn't be able to survive after a holiday for not working, for not gaining, getting any salary. They would be broke. The workers would have no more money. And that's why Mr. Berlin continued to explain, yes, the strike was un unsuccessful because all the workers, they needed the money. And if they continued to join the strike, they wouldn't receive any salary from the company. And so the, uh, after a week or so, after one week or two weeks, all these workers who were on strike, they needed to go back to the factory and work. And because to Mr. Berlin, he needed these people to continue his business. That's why he kept most of the employees at the usual rate, meaning the giving them the same old salary, and for, forgave them and let them start uh, continue to work at his company. But for several people, the ringleaders, like Eva, the one who started and initiated the strike, they were fired. Mr. Berlin didn't keep them because he thought that they were the troublemakers. If these people were kept, there would be another strike again. There would be more troubles in the future. And that's why Mr. Berlin fired her. And Gerald agreed with Mr. Berlin. He worked for his company as well. So Gerald, as a businessman, had to make the decision as Mr. Berlin as well. That's why Gerald agreed with Mr. Berlin. However, Eric didn't. Eric thought that he could still keep her at the factory without raising her salary. Just forgive her like forgiving any other workers. But to Mr. Berlin, he thought this was, this was very silly as well. Because if you, if you didn't make sharp decision, immediate decision like he did, all these workers may start another strike again and ask for even higher salary the next time. And Gerald agreed again. But the inspector didn't. He thought that paying this worker a little bit more it's better than having them killing themselves at the end after a series of unfortunate events. Helping these lower class people when you have the ability is better than seeing these people die but you keep your own money. This is what the inspector thought. And so Mr. Burling found it really weird how this inspector talked. And that's why he asked for his name again and the inspector explained that his name was Gool, G-O-O-L-E. Remember how to spell the inspector's name. Don't spell Google, please. And Mr. Burling tried to say that, oh, he knew Chief Constable, the, the chief police officer, and they were really close friends. And the inspector said he didn't see much of him. So if someone knows your boss so well, probably you should be scared, right? But to the inspector, he wasn't afraid. Mr. Burling continued to explain that he played golf with Chief Constable all the time trying to show off this relationship once again to threaten the inspector not to mess with him because Mr. Burling could get this inspector out of his job if he wanted to. And the inspector wasn't scared and just replied he didn't play golf to show that he didn't care about how you have relationship with all these upper class people. I was just doing my job, inspecting a case, being a real police. And Eric suddenly commented about how he felt so embarrassed and not proud of what Mr. Berling did. So Eric continued to explain why he wasn't proud of Mr. Berling. He thought that Mr. Berling earned a lot so he could actually try to raise the salary at the highest price as possible. He might not need to entertain everyone's wish but he could try to raise the salary still so that he could make everyone had a better living condition because Mr. Berlin earned a lot already. And because Eva had a little bit strong will, he did, she didn't give up so easily. She was still a good worker and shouldn't be fired. This was what Eric thought. 
But to Mr. Burling, he thought that Eric wasn't at his position as a boss. Of course, Eric wouldn't understand how boss should control the cost, keep the cost down, and maximize the profit. And to Mr. Burling, he always thought that Eric was very young, inexperienced, naive. So Mr. Burling even questioned what he ha- Eric had learned from his schools. So to Eric, he felt very embarrassed because it was like a father complaining about you in front of、uh, an outsider, lecturing you in front of an outsider, and of course you wouldn't be happy. And then Mr. Burling cut sharp, saying that, "Oh, I think there shouldn't be much that the inspector should know any more." He just said, "I fired her. She left. That's it. What happened to the girl afterwards?" Mr. Burling asked. Where the evil was out of the street, jobless, homeless, and the inspector replied, "No, she didn't exactly go on the street. She wasn't homeless. So what happened next? Guess who was involved? We'll learn about that in the next video. So that was the incident between Mr. Burling and Eva, and we'll try to learn more about what happened next in the next video. Thank you for watching.